Um, I just wanted to share a little bit some of the terminology that we've been using lately as we've been bringing squishy circuits to younger and younger kids. Uh, in particular, when you go to a group of, for example, three-year-olds, um, unless you have nerdier alphabet books than us, A typically isn't for anode, and uh, C typically isn't for cathode. So how do you talk about LEDs to little kids? First thing is you've got to ask yourself what the activity you're doing is trying to accomplish. Um, if we do switchy circuits with older kids, we care a lot about insulators and conductors. We care an awful lot about proper terminology for LEDs. Um, however, when we're working with three and four-year-olds, honestly, our goal is to show a circuit and talk about open and closed circuits. Um, and as many of you know, an LED has a proper orientation and an improper orientation, and it only works one way. In fact, with older kids, we typically, and adults, I typically say that an LED is like a waterfall for electricity. In a waterfall, the water goes down, but it doesn't go up. In an LED, the current can only flow one way through it. Um, the other way works like a closed door, and you don't get light. So if you put your LED in backwards, it won't light up. So what I'm just going to do is walk you through how I explain squishy circuits to younger kids and beginners. Again, when the goal is to show electricity and an open and closed circuit. So the first thing I do is I have someone take their LED, and again, we use these really large ones uh, that look sort of like a gumdrop. And I always say this looks a little bit like a person, right? A person with two legs. Then, when we made our two Play-Doh lumps and attached them to our battery pack, as in some of our previous videos and in most of the things on our website, I say you want to take your little person, your Play-Doh person, and you want to plug its feet into the Play-Doh shoes so that it has one foot in each shoe. Okay, so once we have our little person, with his feet in the Play-Doh shoes, we turn on our switch. And in this case, it works, and it turned on. But I typically don't have small kids look at their LED and find the longer and shorter leg, unless I've cut them off, uh, cut one of the leads shorter, because it really is a subtle difference. So if this had gone differently, and the person had been put in backwards, and when I turned it on, it didn't turn on, I would smile and say, uh-oh, our person has his feet on the wrong shoes. Let's take him out and switch his shoes. So we take out our person and we switch his shoes. Now our light is lit up. Another common thing I've seen with smaller kids, particularly this past weekend at Maker Faire, is that they take their LED and they pop both leads into one lump of Play-Doh. Um, or as I would say to them, uh-oh, you don't put both your feet in the same shoe, do you? He's got both his feet in one Play-Doh shoe. Let's, let's switch that. And then we put one of the LED's legs into each of the Play-Doh shoes, hopefully on the right feet. If it's on the right feet, we have our light on. All right, so now we can talk about electricity. And we say that electricity wants to run in a circle, a closed loop, a circuit. So our circle, right, is that we have batteries. And I always try to, at some point in the demonstration, show that there are batteries in our box. Uh, <clears throat> we have electricity running through the red wire, through the Play-Doh, through our little LED guy, and then back to our battery. Then I ask them what happens if we touch the two lumps together, or if we're continuing the analogy, the two shoes together. So if we touch the two Play-Doh shoes together, right, our LED turns off, and I say, well, what's happening here is electricity is sort of lazy. If you had the choice of taking the elevator up 50 stories, or you had the choice of walking upstairs 50 stories, which would you choose? And often, they'll say the elevator. And when I ask why, they'll say, oh, it, it, it's, too, it's too hard to go up the stairs. And we say the same thing's happening here. When given the choice, the electricity will run through the Play-Doh shoes instead of through the LED. It's like taking the elevator instead of taking the stairs. But it's got to run in that loop, so it's got to complete a circle, and it's just going through the shoes. When we separate the Play-Doh shoes, the only way to complete a circle for the electricity is to run through the light emitting diode, our little light-up person. So in a nutshell, our goal when doing LEDs with small kids are open and closed circuits, right? Um, short circuits, and then our little LED person with two feet two Play-Doh shoes, and we have to make sure that there is one foot in each shoe, not two feet in two shoes. And if the light doesn't turn on, again, we say that he has his shoes on backwards, and we need to turn him around and switch which foot goes on which shoes. So that's our terminology that we've been using rather successfully with groups of three, three-year-olds, um, sometimes younger, sometimes a little bit older. All right, have, have fun playing. Thank you.